All right, Steeler fans, welcome back to the second half of the podcast. Time for the mailbag segment like we do every single Wednesday on the Let's Ride podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go back and check out the first half on our audio-only side. I think you'll enjoy it. A lot of good information about the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh. But let's start this thing off with Jeff Coons, our buddy from up north. He says, greetings from Not Matt Canada. I'm on vacation this week, a rare break from the shipyard. Do you think the Steelers will have a top five rushing attack this year? And if so, how will George Pickens respond to a more run dependent tight end focused offense? So outside of you, you guys up there in Canuck land spell offense weird with a C I it's tough for me as an editor to see that and not want to change it. But I think that they will have, I don't think they will be top five. I think they will be top 10. And I think that George Pickens will be fine because if they would have a good run game, and it establishes play action passes, which gets Pickens down the field more for big plays. He'll be happy. Ask any wide receiver. Would you rather catch a deep bomb or would you rather catch a bunch of five yard hitch routes? Most will say they'd rather catch a deep bomb. So we'll see though. I understand everyone's thoughts on George Pickens. Let's go to Brian Haynes. He has several questions. He said with the media and publicity swirling, is it possible the quarterback one is Justin Fields? Well, Brian, I hope you listened to the first half of the podcast because I did talk at length about that. I th- I think it's going to all depend on Russell Wilson, both from a performance standpoint and his health. And if he gets the opportunity, can Justin Fields seize it? That's the question. We'll see. Other one from Brian Haynes, which is a better golf movie? Happy Gilmore, The Legend of Bagger Vance. If I'm just talking about pure golf, uh, uh, geez, probably Bagger Vance from a golf movie perspective, from a viewer's perspective, like enjoyment, going to go with Happy Gilmore. The last one from Brian, as a father of five, how do you balance work and kids asking as another father of five? Well, I'll be honest. It's not easy. It isn't easy. I'm thankful that I get to work from home now. Uh, I'm thankful that my children share in my passion for a lot of things. So an example is golf. Uh, so my kids all golf, uh, the little, the youngest two, not so much, but the older three, uh, there are times where I'll say to my wife, Hey, I'm going to go golfing and I'm going to just play nine holes. And I'm taking three kids with me. And we'll go to the golf course and we'll walk nine and we'll have a good time. And I get to talk with them and to be with them it's time spent as well as being outside and playing golf. So, um, it, it's difficult. It's difficult, but I always try to allot time for them every single day, try to do it individually. That's my goal. Every single day I fail most days, but that's my goal every day. All right, let's go to beer bottle. He said playoffs. Okay. Imagine we get there. Who do you want to beat in the wild card round and where? All right, so if we're in the wild card round, the Steelers are in the wild card round. They're typically on the road, and well, they would be on the road if they're a wild card team. Uh, I would love, love for the Steelers to. I love when they shock the world. I always go back to 2005 when they went to Indianapolis in the divisional round and beat the Colts. Like that's just a perfect example. Uh, but if I were to pick where and who the Steelers would beat in the wild card round, uh, give me. Give me the, I'll go outside the division to make it easy. So no division teams. Give me the Chiefs in Arrowhead. You can beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead if they struggle and don't have the number one seed with the bye. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Let's go to James. The pads are on, Jeff. Time for another training camp activity. You're first up in backs on backers. Are you a bull rushing linebacker or a run backer that's blocking? So uh, I'm not a bull rushing linebacker. I'd be probably a running back that's blocking. I'm not a big dude. I'm five, nine buck 65, you know, like I'm, I'm lean. I'm not a big guy. So I'm probably going to be the, the, the running back that's trying to block, I guess. And he said, based off of your first answer, who's your matchup. If I had to pick the pass rusher to try and block good Lord, like I, I'm not a Jalen Warren, Jalen Warren's five, nine, but he probably weighs close to 200 pounds. Cause he's just a, He's like a muscle hamster. He's just like a tiny little ball of muscle. So I would probably say that give me the weakest one you got. <laughs> That's what I would say. Let's go to Michael Bell. Hello, Jeff. It seems like Herbig has been getting the vast majority of the reps with the ones thus far. And that Zach Frazier hasn't been performing particularly stellar. Do you still think Frazier will be the week one starter? I think this is one of those situations where you're going to see with the pads on the Steelers are going to put these rookies in a position to prove their worth. You saw, you've seen it so far at camp with Troy Fawotanu going up against TJ Watt, like he did and, and winning some of those battles. Uh, Zach Frazier is going to be given those same opportunities. How does he handle it? How does he handle those big 
nose tackles. Unfortunately, I mean, I guess they have Braden Fajoko. He'd be a good person to have go up against Zach Frazier. But how does he also handle the Montrevious Adams, the Keanu Bentons of the world? Those are going to dictate how the Steelers view him. Don't read too much into just the first week with just the Steelers having one padded practice under their belt before we go jumping to some conclusions. So I think he'll be the starter. I do. I really do. Another one from Brian. I missed this one. He said, what do you look forward to the most in training camp? I just love the reports. I love the news. I love checking the steelcurtainnetwork.com tracker and just going through and seeing everything that's being reported, videos that are there, interviews that are happening. It's news and it's news coming at you fast and furious. I love everything about it. Let's go to Eric. He said, can you see anyone besides Pickens and maybe Fryermuth getting 50 plus catches? Or do you think it'll be more of a committee from wide receiver two down all season? I agree with the latter part of your question. I think it's going to be a by committee approach. I think that you're going to see like your Calvin Austin, the thirds, if Scotty Miller makes the team, Quez Watkins, Van Jefferson, Roman Wilson, on and on and on. If they all make the team, which I don't think they all will. It's just going to be a plug and play. You're all going to have a handful of catches. That's just what we're going to probably see, barring something drastic happening. Let's go to West Coast N. Hi, Jeff. If you could snap your fingers and you could guarantee one player to break out a training camp, who would you pick? So if I could just snap my fingers and one player breaks out in training camp, this is a tough one. I'm going to say, snap my fingers, Broderick Jones. That Broderick Jones plays so well that the Steelers just say, you know, we th- this guy that we traded up for in 2023, he's everything that we thought he was. We're going to throw him on the left side. He's the anchor at left tackle for the next decade plus because he's still so flipping young. Give me Darnell Washington. All right. Uh, Eric asked another one. Hey, Jeff was wondering why you see the DEF CON levels for running back at, at a level three. I think it's got to be one of the best tandems in the league, at least top five plus Cordero and improved line play. I'm very optimistic. Plus Najee should average more than four yards per carry. I hope love what you do. Hashtag writer. I agree. Thank you, Eric. I just want to see all of those pieces of the puzzle that you just outlined working in concert together. That's why it's a three. I like Najee Harris and I like Jalen Warren. I think they are a very good tandem, but I want to see the line, the running backs, everything work in tandem so that they are a dominant group. Last season, it was a lot of hit or miss, you know, Najee Harris running into the back of his lineman repeatedly, Jalen Warren breaking off a long run, which pads everything. I want to see it work together. Once Najee Harris starts getting over four yards per carry, like you mentioned, then maybe I'll start being a believer and buying into it. Let's go to Brandon Diaz. First question. What will be a bigger story this season? Najee slash Warren or the offensive line battles? I think it's offensive line battles. I don't think there's a story with Najee and Jalen Warren. They are what they are. They, they are, they are who they are. I think the Steelers absolutely like their running back depth, and I don't think there's a discussion or debate about how they're going to handle it in 2024. After that year, that's different. Next one, does the lack of reps hurt Russell Wilson more than we think? I don't think so. And Russell Wilson said it himself, especially up until the padded practices, all the stuff they'd been doing, he was doing with his teammates before camp started. He had them all down in Florida. They were all down there training, throwing, working together, those are the reps that they were getting there anyways. The only thing he missed were some fake 11 on 11 drills and some seven on seven stuff, which he participated in the seven on seven drills Tuesday, first padded practice looked really sharp on time. No, I don't think it's a bigger deal than people think next do the lack of reps, any chance field starts or takes over earlier than we expect. I'm going to reference my first half of this podcast, all of the source information that we have about this situation I'm sure that answered your question. Next question. Biggest story out of camp so far is I'm going to say the biggest story out of camp so far is just the quarterbacks. I wish it was a different position, but it's not. I could also say the rookies showing out, you know, you got Peyton Wilson making plays. He didn't look great in backs on backers kind of looked like a fish out of water, as you would expect a rookie in the NFL going up against those type of players. Peyton Wilson's made plays. Uh, You've seen Roman Wilson up until he got injured on Tuesday making plays. Uh, Troy Falutani is looking good. Zach Frazier looks the part. Logan Lee is starting to show out. We're seeing these players. That could be another storyline. And the last one from Brandon, watching the Olympics, question mark. Uh, Yeah, I am watching the Olympics, actually. Watched some water polo. Uh, Saw 
Rafa Nadal and Djokovic the other day in tennis. I'm really looking forward to the golf this upcoming weekend. Uh, I've watched some gymnastics with my daughters. They like to watch that stuff. So I sit down and watch with them from time to time. But no, I, I, I did see the crazy finish of Australia versus us and the bronze medal uh, rugby. Oh my gosh. If you haven't seen it, look it up. What a play. It's like the equivalent of uh, a, a last second kick return return for a touchdown for a win. Just really, really exciting. So yeah, I'm watching a little bit. Let's go to Jay Allen. Who are your two all time Steelers backs on backers participants? All right, so I am actually going to say that I would probably put Jalen Warren on this list. Jalen Warren, the way that he can stand up these pass rushers is something else. Uh, if I'm picking a linebacker that's going to go against him, I'd love to see Lawrence Timmons might be on my all-time list. That guy, Lawrence Timmons, law dog, his Mike Tomlin's first first-round draft pick as the head coach of the Steelers, that dude punished people in this drill. Punished them. That would be a good one. He said, how about the all NFL backs on backers? I'm sure Mike Allstott was a beast in this drill on the offensive side. And I'm sure that someone like, man, I'm trying to think about some of those inside linebackers, like a Zach Thomas. Boy, would that be a collision? That would be insane. Or you go Mike Singletary. Like those are just some legendary players that we'd be talking about there for sure. All right, let's go to Steeler fan 69. He likes to insert some uh, humor from time to time. Here we go. He said, don't throw false teeth at your car. You might dent your vehicle. Dent your vehicle dentures. Hope you got it. Next, he said, it's ironic how funeral directors have raised the price of funerals and blamed it on the cost of living. <laughs> Sorry. All right, next one and last one. Did you hear about the Dolly Parton diet? It really works. It made my friend Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Get it, Joe. My friend Joe made it lean. All right. Thank you very much, Steeler Fan 69. I will share those with the family. They always enjoy hearing those jokes. I thank everyone for tuning in on this Wednesday podcast. Nothing but the news for you right here. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're going to have training camp reports. I want to direct your attention to our YouTube channel. I've been doing daily training camp recaps right here for the Steel Curtain Network. You can check those out on our YouTube shorts. Go to youtube.com and search Steel Curtain Network. You'll find it. Subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate it. You'll also be able to watch all of our shows in the PM, Steelers Hangover, the Scobro Show, live simulcast there. So check it out. I do take some of my Let's Ride podcasts for those visual learners and put those on the YouTube channel. Also, make sure you're checking out all of our content. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, follow, subscribe so that you get all of our shows, like the Steel City Insider coming up today at 11, like tomorrow uh, on Thursday morning, the Pittsburgh Standard Time with Dave Schofield and Greg, Greg Benevent. Make sure you check that, that, that. And also, I can't say it enough, SteelCurtainNetwork.com. I'm really proud of that website. And again, SteelCurtainNetwork.com and FansFirstSports.com, putting out some great content across the world of sports. Go check it out. That does it for me, though. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for listening and be a part of the Ride or Die crew. We do appreciate it. You know we finish these out. Be safe, be kind, and God bless. We'll see you on Friday. Go Steelers.